Aloha, it's Kim Jolene with Finding Your Fiji, and I bring harmony to your head, your heart, and your home. And I'm Dr. Kara Govins of the Animal Wisdom Circle, where you can become your best self through animal wisdom. Beautiful. So we're super excited to continue our series with you here. This is your Nature Guide series, and we are now on part three. Uh, so if you haven't watched the other two parts, we encourage you to go back and watch those before you watch this one. Um, but today we are going to be sharing with you how to work with your guides. And, you know, it's funny, we, um, in this series, we've noticed that somehow we've come up with four steps <laughs> for everything. <laughs> Yes. It's just like a funny number that we keep that keeps showing up. So um, today we've got four steps for you again. And the first one is to start with what may seem obvious. We may be stating the obvious, but the first one is to call in your guide. So you're developing a relationship with your guide. And so this video is really about how do you manage, how do you navigate that relationship? And the first step is that you initiate the contact by calling in your guide in whatever way is appropriate for you. You can visualize them, you can say it in your mind, you can light a candle, you can have a ritual, whatever you want. Um, I'm usually driving down the road going, hey, <laughs> God damn, clear it up for me. But you know, however you wanna do it, but that first step is that you initiate that contact and call in your guide. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. So the second step is asking them for guidance. And I would really encourage you to do this all the time. Um, so no matter what is happening, what's going on in your life, whatever you need help with, ask them for help. Ask them for guidance. Ask them for your next step. Ask, ask, ask. I can't like stress that enough. Yeah, and as you're saying that, Kim, what's really coming to me is to you know go back to the part two of this series because we talk about ways to recognize that guidance, you know, how you get your information. But as you're asking, there's a lot of different awarenesses for how that um, information can come in, which I guess is really, you know, step three of listen. You know, we say listen for your guidance, listen to what happens, but in reality, it's monitoring all these different channels. You may have some words that come into your head you may get an image, you may have a memory, there may be a song on the radio that makes you wanna do something. You know, you may feel something in your body, a, a pulling back or a moving forward or a feeling stronger or, you know, all of those are signs of that response. So part of working with your guide is kind of developing your system for how do I know what they're saying to me? How, how do I recognize that? Because it may not always come as something that you hear. It could come in a lot of different ways. Yes, yeah, exactly. And we are actually gonna dive into that bit of things a little bit deeper in part four when we talk about how to receive your guidance. So we will, we will dive into that a little bit deeper. Um, but essentially, I feel like um, listening also is related to creating daily space for them to talk to you. So that daily practice of meditation, that daily, Space where you're getting quiet so that you can listen and you can actually hear them okay so it is something that you have to practice it's not something that you can just do like one day and then set it down for a couple weeks and then pick it back up it's, it's a practice that that helps that that communication between the two of you flow or not the two of you but you and your whole team essentially because we each have that's one thing to just say like each one of us has a whole team of angels and guides uh, they're, they're there just for us, and they're there to help us navigate this life and do what we came here to do. And so really having that communication, that two-way communication with them on a daily basis. I was telling Kara when we were talking about this video, and what we we're going to do is that I, um, I, I don't tend to actually like call them in because I'm in a constant communication with them all day long, every day. So I'm constantly like asking them this and what do you think about this and you know is this something I meant to do and and I'm constantly in that dialogue with them so I feel like it's like they're in the room with me all the time right um, and that's partly because of the work that I do too because all the work that I do involves them um, so you know some people that have a regular nine-to-five job that isn't intuitive you know, they're maybe not connecting with them, but I would encourage you to bring them into your work because they can help you with that too. 
Yeah. So just being receptive and that practicing that like intuition, intuitive guidance from your guides, it can be subtle and it can be a learned skill that you can get better at. So the more time you spend being open to receiving and monitoring your channels, the better you're going to be at recognizing what is guidance and what isn't guidance, what's worry, what's your, your thought process and what's real actual guidance that you should be acting on. So yes. I, I totally agree. Make time for that on a regular basis. Yes. And it should feel peaceful when you, when you receive, it should feel peaceful. It shouldn't feel stressful. Um, it should feel, feel like calm, right? It should be feeling that peaceful. So the fourth thing, is the most one of the most important things that and I get this in readings all the time for people you need to take action so oftentimes people get the guidance they're hearing what they need to do and then they don't take action they don't do it right they're just like oh yeah I, I heard that or I got that message but yeah I haven't done anything about that you need to take action that's really really important and and there's a you know kind of a snowball effect because the more that you're willing to take that action and and take that little step the more you're going to be able to notice the guidance when it comes next time the easier that step's going to be next time the easier life gets when you just put yourself in that flow so when you're asking for guidance um just that keeps that whole process going you know like kim has it going all the time like this i don't have it like that all the time but I, I'm monitoring my body all the time. So I'll have thoughts about, well, what, what, what should I do about this class? Should I offer that? Should I write this book? And I'll see how it feels in my body. And that's, you know, that's my personal intuition, but that's also how my guides talk to me. And that's how I get my guidance from them by feeling it in my body and, and having all of those different sensations. So it can show up in a lot of ways. I really find that the more I'm willing to act, whether I understand that action or not, <laughs> right, the, the better right. things tend to be working out and the more I get the guidance moving on. And especially in the beginning when I was starting to do this work, that was, that was the, really the, the key was being willing to risk it and to take that action. And it just got easier and easier. Yes. So I want to actually give like two very simple examples of how this works. Like when you take action that you're getting guided to do. So um, one example is, um, and this comes from quite a long time ago, but I had something I had of a friend of mine's, right? That I've been meaning to get back to her. And I got the intuitive hit or the guidance to bring it with me. And I can't even remember where I was going. I was going somewhere that there was the likelihood of seeing this person was pretty much zero. Like I, there just would be no reason that I would even run into them or see them. And I hadn't connected with them or anything like that about meeting them or anything. But I thought I, I got the guidance, bring this with you. I brought it with me. Boom. Sure enough, I run into them just like out of, out of, um, you know, there's no such thing as a uh, coincidence. I don't believe synchronicity, right? Um, they line things up and I had this thing that I've been meaning to get back to them with me and it was beautiful, right? So that's one example. Another example is I was at the beach on um, Tuesday night for the Lionsgate. We did a meditation on the beach. It was like amazing. Uh, and so uh, I was at the beach and I was there. I was one of the earlier people there. And I went for a swim in the ocean and then I had like my, you know, my wetsuit, my wet towel and stuff like that. And I'm like, I feel like I want to bring this to the car. It was quite a long walk to go back to the car. And this other lady's like, like, why, why are you going to walk that back to the car? And I'm like, well, be less to carry. I don't know. I just need to go. <laughs> so, so I just grabbed my suit, my wet stuff, my wet towel and walked to the car. And sure enough, when I was co coming back to the beach from the car, one of the ladies had this chair and she's a little bit older lady. And, um, uh, just, I offered to carry it for her. You know, I said, can I help you with that? I think that's why I was supposed to come back. Oh, my gosh. She's like, that's an answer to my prayers. Thank you. Right? Because it was a very long walk, and I was able to carry that easily for her. Right? So that's the kind of thing. Like, you don't know what's going to happen when you follow it. You just got to follow it. Yeah. And that's the challenge in the beginning is you can't explain it. You can't understand it. You know what you get. And, um, you know, I have – it took me a bunch of times of getting the guidance, really knowing it was guidance and not acting on it and having really bad consequences, like missing out on stuff yeah. that I wanted yeah. because I didn't, where I could finally tie it together and say, okay, like 
I'm willing to, to take that risk, to take that leap of faith, because I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that I need to do that thing. And, and for me, that's what it took. It took screwing it up a bunch of times before I finally said, okay. Yeah, and they, you know, I've had experience with that too. Um, and what often happens is if things aren't flowing in your life, it's typically because you're not following the guidance. Because otherwise, if you're following what you're being given, things are flowing. Money is flowing, relationships are good, you know, things are just, magic is happening all the time. When you're not, not Yeah, so and that's why you want to work with your spirit guide, right? Like, that's what exactly. we want. Exactly. You want that ease, the grace, the flow, everything moving, you know, at its natural pace and all that good stuff coming our way. So that's, that's why you got to do it. Yes, perfect. So just to recap um, how to work with your guides, number one, call them in. Number two, ask for guidance. Three is listen, right? Listen to them. And four is take action on it. So take that action on it. Um, so what I'm going to um, give you today or the link that I'm going to include down below is a link to my free readings because it's early in the month. And if you're wanting to get a little bit of guidance and see how that comes in for you, uh, I have free YouTube readings for all the Zodiac signs every single month. Uh, so if you're on my channel, you probably see them a lot. But if you're new to me, if you're maybe just stumbling on this on Instagram or somewhere else, um, then you want to go out and check out your free reading and see the guidance that's coming in for you because it will actually give you guidance for this particular month. And, you know, I had um, planned on one thing and I'm going to change it up here because I'm going to put in a link for the Animal Wisdom Circle because that's where we get spiritual guidance from animal spirit guides. And so if you want to experience that, then um, there's an opportunity for that. And you can um, check it all out on the link. And there will be a free, I'm, I'm thinking, actually, I think, Kim, you're my guest um, for the interview for this month. So um, either you can October. come and join us. Yeah, next month. Oh, you're October. You're October. Yeah, October. So. Well, if you, if you go to the link and you get signed up on the list, then you'll also be notified when um, Kim is my guest expert. And I don't even know what we're going to talk about then. But um, anyways, so the Animal Wisdom Circle, you can come and give that a try. Awesome. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, we'll see you on the next video. Um, next week, we'll be talking about how we receive our guidance, how it comes into us. And you'll be getting lots of juicy tips in that part four of the Meet Your Guides series. That's the fun one. I think I'm looking forward to that one the most. I am <laughs> so, too. So much see you guys fun. over there. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a great day.